Adobe expanding further into generative AI, partnering with Google's Bard. And I've got the CEO of Shantanu Narayan from Adobe himself joins us to discuss. Shantanu, it's great to see you. I'm very, people are very excited about Adobe Firefly because it's working for advertisers. It's working for merchants. Why don't you tell us how it's doing? Well, it's great to be back uh, on the show, uh, Jim. And uh, clearly, the world is abuzz with everything that's happening with uh, generative AI. And so from Adobe's point of view, we clearly see it as a expansion of our addressable market opportunity. So the first thing that we did was we said, given the amount of data that we have, how do we create a foundational model, which only a few companies in the world can do, to deal with images? Uh, that'll again be expanded to deal with video and animation and 3D. And that, as you point out, is called Adobe Firefly. It was designed to be commercially safe so it's very unique and differentiated because it uh, respects the IP uh, with which you can get that piece of content. But the foundational model is just one part of what we are doing, uh, Jim. The really exciting part also is how we integrate that product. The term that's being used in the industry certainly is autopilot. And so within all of our applications, whether it's Photoshop or Illustrator or Express, you're going to see that on-ramp that generative AI does significantly enhanced through the workflow. And so uh, it's a very exciting time. Uh, enterprises can use that foundational model and also train it with their data. So whether it's NBC or Coke or somebody like a Netflix, they can enhance Adobe's model and really ensure that the data that they provide is unique only to them. And last but not least, and I think you alluded to this, I think the ecosystem of partners who are excited about partnering with Adobe, whether it's NVIDIA on the chip side, training and inference, whether it's Microsoft with Azure, or most recently something exciting with Google and how within BARD, you can now say, generate me an image and that becomes top of funnel traffic for Adobe because we can then uh, tweak that within our application. So exciting no. time for us. Oh, absolutely. Now, I thought you'd also go with the small business person because, you know, you know, a small business person that I know who uses it, it makes everybody look like they are the most professional of all. You can change colors. You can use your commerce system. It's a rather incredible thing for someone who might have to take four or five days to be able to change something in five minutes. And that is something that the small people have never been able to do. That's absolutely right. I mean, the whole point of technology, uh, people talk about the disruptive nature, but people don't talk enough, I think, about how it enhances productivity and democratizes the ability for people to have uh, the footprint that they want and personalize the content. I heard you talk earlier about how you wanted your personalized coffee first thing in the morning, <laughs> uh, Jim. And now we can allow every small and medium business on the planet to say, how do I get the right content? How do I personalize it for the people that I'm trying to do? And the whole process from content creation all the way out to monetization, how can we accelerate that? And so even for our digital marketing business, and as people are now dealing with all these new streaming platforms, how you get your ad tailored in the right way to the people that you want to uh, address, uh, we've accelerated that process like never before. Now, in the meantime, Shantanu, I was uh, very concerned to see while well, grocery prices are up, you have all the numbers for everything online. Grocery, uh, the business up year over year, but personal care up only three, but appliances down 7.1%, sporting goods down 64 There's still an aversion to hard good purchasing, isn't there? Well, the Adobe Digital Index that you're referring to, uh, Jim, gives us really good visibility into what's happening uh, with commerce worldwide. And actually, if you look at the price of goods, it does appear that for eight months in a row right now that uh, inflation is uh, being under check. Uh, you point out correctly that there are different goods that perhaps you know are in demand versus where they may not be as much secular demand. But overall, I think the trend uh, associated with combating inflation I think is a very positive trend. Sean, you know, I feel like we've been talking about the dangers of deep fakes for a long time now, and it's certainly more relevant that uh, now that the AI story is getting embraced by the street. But I just wonder if you think we are making a sufficient progress in regulating that and whether that needs to happen through companies or, or public policy. Well, Carl, uh, the real thing that Adobe has been focused on, as you're aware, is what we are calling the Content Authenticity Initiative. And it has multiple facets to it. And so when we think about it first, let me give you the 
a quick update. There are a thousand companies that have now signed up. Uh, and when you think about the content workflow, whether it's camera manufacturers or chip manufacturers up front, they are certainly saying we want the content credentials. A tools company like Adobe, when somebody creates the content, we are ensuring that the provenance of who created it and using AI to understand whether that's been altered, we've done that. On the distribution side, uh, everybody who's distributing that content is also now saying, we will continue to keep that metadata and whether it's a check mark or being able to determine whether Carl created it or Jim created it, that part has also been done. I think the last step in this content authenticity is ensuring that the customers ask for it. And how you train the customers to think about, I want to know where that piece of content came from and whether it was altered. I think that's the last step in the process, but the plumbing is really there. And I think the ask will increasingly come because as you know, AI allows you, whether it's on the audio or video to really create any piece of content. And I think as it relates to legislation, I think there's a meeting uh, in DC, our general counsel is going to be there. I think we will certainly continue to push the envelope on that, but at the end of the day, it's the consumer trust and consumers being trained to say, I want to see that piece of content and who it came from. I think that's going to be another step in this education journey that's important for all of us, Carl.